I want to start by getting to know you a little bit, by asking you a question. If you had an extra 40 hours per month, what would you do with the time? Work out, sleep, spend more time with family. The reason why I start with that question is because I'm going to show you how to get that. Now, in 17 minutes, this is based on two days worth of a boot camp experience. Um, so I'm going to be able to get you about five hours. And then, if you, and then if you come to the workshop, I can triple that Okay, this afternoon. Now, also what I need to do to get to know you a little bit better is talk about three groups of people that I've experienced working with. Um, The first I call the Zen Master, and the Zen Master is inherently organized, always been on time. Time management has never been an issue for you. And so the fact that some guy's coming up and talking to you about productivity is, is, you feel, is a waste of time. How many of you would put yourself into the Zen Master category by raise of hand? One, two, three, four. Okay, that's quite a bit. That's actually higher than average, which I would not expect in this room. Um, Usually I see about one in a hundred. So just speaking to those people right here. If I can help you by helping the rest of these screwed up people around you stop making your life miserable, will that be nice to you? Okay. <laughs> the next group I call the lost soul. The lost soul has the heart of a Zen master, but something's happened in the last 10 to 15 years, hasn't it? You've lost your way. And it's frustrating to you because you crave order and organization, but you're not quite sure what happened or how to get back. Whoops. So if I can help you get back to that place, how many of you would, recognize, would uh, identify with the, the lost soul category? So if I can help you get back to that place and show you where you got off track, would that be of value to you? Okay. And then the last group is the pig pen. And the pig pen isn't... <laughs> people are already raising their hands. The pig pen is inherently disorganized and you've never really been uh, organized and you've it's not to say that you're not successful it's just you've learned how to succeed in spite of your natural tendencies so how many would put yourself into that category great that's a that's actually more than what I would expect in this room so if I can help you guys find that order be on time without sacrificing your creativity or your ability to build relationships would that be of value to you Now, the reason why I start with this, first of all, is to get to know my audience, but second of all, so that you get to know me, because you need to understand that I sit squarely in the pig pen category. Now, you would not know it by watching me operate, but I am inherently disorganized, one of the most chaotic, disorganized people in the world. Dave was my brother speaking up there, okay? And what... It, what was happening was, you know, this is a picture of kind of what my office looked like. You had to use a shovel to get from the door to the desk about eight years ago. And not only was I experiencing that in, a, in an organizational standpoint, but a career standpoint. I mean, I was jumping from high school teacher to sales rep. I started as a business coach. That picture at the bottom is actually me as a rock star trying to have a band. Okay? Now, I've heard a statement that says, if you want a man to get religion, make him a father. And it was about the time that I knew that I was going to be a father that I said, this needs to stop. I am making life hell for my wife. I needed to figure out how to weigh, to not necessarily change who I am, but be organized and, and, be, and be successful in spite of that. So what do all messed up people do? I went and saw a shrink, right? I went and visited a psychologist. He said, hmm, this is really interesting. Let me give you a test. He gave me another test. And then he said, word for word, a phrase I'll never forget. Has anyone ever talked to you about ADHD? You are freaking off the charts, ADHD. If there were a fifth standard deviation, you'd be in it. I can say with 99.99% accuracy, you've got it. That changed my world, because then I leaned on my, my training, which was systems, which Michael Gerber so tactfully shared with us yesterday. <laughs> and what I found is that personal systems and business systems are inseparably connected. This is one of the huge disconnects that happens in small business, because we've heard it. We know that we need to have systems in our business, but the problem is those business systems are only as effective as the systems of the individuals operating them. So what I'm going to do is show you the core of how we can change those systems, and we're going to do a little uh, exercise. But first, the problem is 
even though you don't have ADHD, statistically speaking, only one out of 10 people in this room maximum have it. But the rest of us live in an ADHD world. We've conditioned ourselves to make these switches constantly. There's a number that comes out of Basex research, 28%. And Basics found that the average knowledge worker, everyone in this room fits in that category and the majority of your employees do, the, the average knowledge worker loses 28% of their day due to interruptions and the recovery time associated with those interruptions. That's an entire work week every single month. Remember that 40 hours that I said at the beginning? This is where that time is. I'm gonna use the term switches and switching costs and you're about to see why. What I'd like you to do, if you can quickly do this, Take a piece of paper, turn it sideways, and draw three lines across it. If you've only got a digital option, you can try to do this digitally. It may not work quite as well, but, but this, this will work. What you're going to do is recopy the phrase you see there, multitasking is worse than a lie. I just want you to recopy it. Don't do it until I say go. And then you're going to write the numbers 1 through 27, one number for every letter in the phrase. So we're going to do this together. I'm going to time this. Ready? Get set. Go. Five seconds. Ten seconds. Fifteen. Twenty. We'll go ten more. Twenty-five. 30, we'll go five more. Okay, 35, most of you should be done by now. Great, now we're gonna do this again, but what we're going to do is do what you're actually doing when you think you're multitasking, which is switch tasking. You're switching rapidly back and forth, so we're gonna simulate that right now. You're gonna do the same thing, but for every letter that you write, write a number. So you're going to write M, one, U, two, L, three, and so on, got it? Okay, ready? Get set and go. Five seconds. Ten seconds. Fifteen. Twenty seconds. Twenty five. 30, 35, this is where we were when we stopped last time, 40, 45, 50, 55, we'll go 10 more seconds. 60, and 65, and if you're not done by now, just give up. <laughs> what you just experienced are the three effects of multitasking. What's the first most obvious one, right? Time. The amount of time it takes to complete things when you switch task increases. This is how it happens in your day. You're sitting at your computer, you're typing away at an email, someone calls or walks through the door and they say, excuse me, I've got just a Quick question, I call it the dreaded double Q, right? So let's say that I stop what I'm doing. I don't even try to multitask, but I answer the question. The answer is 42, thank you very much, see you later. Now what do I need to do? Where was I, what was I thinking about, what, what was I writing? Or if you're freaking off the charts ADHD like me, you'll completely forget you had an email screen, see into papers of paper, start working on it, filling it out, and three hours later the uncomplete email is still there, right? The amount of time it takes to complete things increases, which leads us to the second effect, which is the quality of the work. Take a look at the first and the second times that you did this. Be honest by raise of hands, how many of you ended up on a number other than 27? Right? College educated, some of you very successful people, yet you're screwing up. Interestingly enough, I had, had someone, uh, a client from EO Buffalo. He told me the story. He gave me permission to share it. He said, Dave, I once got on the the wrong plane and ended up in the wrong city because of multitasking. I said, he said, I was going to New York and I ended up in Boston instead. I said, how is that possible post 
He said, well, I was multitasking and going on my phone, and the, the, the check-in terminal wasn't working, but the attendant was also multitasking. So he actually physically got on the seat, ended up in Boston, and then they had to reissue a ticket. Whenever you see smart people making dumb mistakes, that's nearly always a symptom of switch tasking. And then number three is stress. Think about the feeling that you had between the two times that you did this. How many times since you were four or five have you been copying numbers and letters off of a board? Yet the moment we introduce multitasking into the equation, it becomes difficult and painful and laborious. Is it little wonder that we live in a world that has so many time-saving devices and so many stress-relieving outlets that we feel we have less time and we're more stressed out than we've ever been in the history of the world? And who's to blame? Al Gore. <laughs> right? Because he invented the internet. Right? So just to recap, when you switch task, the amount of time it takes to complete things increases. The quality of the work decreases and your stress levels increase. Now there's a fourth effect that we're going to simulate right now. I want you to quickly find, as Sam said uh, yesterday, your geographically convenient partner. And what I want you to do is for 20 seconds, just tell that other person about a hobby that you love doing. And I want you to come back quickly, OK? Ready? Go. Five, four, three, two, one, stop. Give me your attention. Now, I want you to reverse roles, but with a change. We're going to do the same thing we did last time. This time, the person who's listening, I want you to multitask on the other person. Play with your phone, look at your papers, that sort of thing. Ready? Set, go. Five, four, three, two, one, stop. Give me your attention. Please give me your attention. In one word, you know, I taught high school. Well, okay, I won't show you that. Okay, in one word, how did that make you feel? Just yell it out. Awkward, unimportant. It always comes back to something around unimportant. Imagine this scenario, people. You wake up in the morning, you sit down to breakfast with your significant other. You turn to them and you say, hi, honey, you're unimportant. What are you going to do today? <laughs> or even better, someone calls your company and they say, thank you for calling XYZ Company where you're unimportant. How can I help you? Well, you would never do that, right? But we do that. Right? When you multitask on a human being, that's exactly what you're communicating to them. I'm going to finish with a story. Now, I'm a big NFL fan, thanks to fantasy football. And uh, we had a bunch of people over at our house. We were watching the Super Bowl. This was about five years ago. Giants-Patriots game. What a great game. And I'm really into it. I'm watching the game. I'm excited. It was you know, just the, the height of drama. And then I look down, and I see this. That's my son Stratton when he was two. And he looks up at me with a book about Eskimos and says, Daddy, read story? In the middle of the Super Bowl? Are you kidding me? What would you do in that situation? Three options went through my head. First of all, go away, kid. Don't bother me. It's the Super Bowl. Come on. Number two, I multitask, right? put him on my lap, we, we can all win. I read the story to him, and touchdown! Oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. But I know that there are four effects of multitasking, which you know now, right? Number one, the amount of time it takes to complete things increases. The quality of it decreases. Both our stress levels increase, and the quality of our relationship decreases. So I went with the third option, which was I read the story. You know how long it took? Three minutes. And when I was done, he said, thank you, Daddy, and went off to do whatever three-year-olds do. 
But for those three minutes, he knew that I was 100% focused on him. And we had that moment. These are the opportunities that you have. These are the opportunities that your business has every single day. And unfortunately, it can be, well, to your advantage, fortunately, it can be a powerful differentiator in today's world. If you can be the person who both with your intention and your actions give people 100% of your attention. So in my workshop, I'm going to give you practical strategies on how to reduce those switches, get more time, build the quality of your relationships. Thank you.